Good evening. My name is David Barkovich and I'm a school counselor here at North Hills High School. We are going to begin in just a moment or so. This is a notice that we will be recording this evening's presentation. It will be published on the North Hills website at a later date. I am joined today by Mrs. Deborah Davis, the school counselor for students with L through Z, and she will be managing the chat as I conduct the audio portion of today's presentation. We highly encourage you to use the chat option to pose questions because we would be excited to answer them for the larger group. We are going to begin at this time and we will be recording this session. Welcome to Career and College Planning for Seniors. Our goal is to help our students at North Hills find their own best destiny, whatever that might be. There are a variety of post-secondary options that students can pursue after North Hills, and we hope that students use a thoughtful and organized method of determining what will be the best option for them. Our hope is that we will teach you some strategies that will enable you to have success in this process and give you the knowledge regarding what particular tasks you would need to do when you apply to these post-secondary options. You will hear me use the term post-secondary options a number of times because after high school, which is what post-secondary means, there are a variety of different options. The graphic here illustrates some of them. And whatever you feel is your best destiny, we would like you to help, help you to achieve it. Now, some of the things that you dreamed about and thought about in the past are no longer theoretical. Things like prom, graduation, choosing a career path, these are real, they are coming. And if you are watching this uh, with some folks from your family unit, your parents or guardians, then perhaps this is a good time to turn to them and talk for a second about whether or not you find this exciting or maybe frightening or maybe a little bit of both. It is a challenging time where you are on the cusp of some new adventures, a new stage in life. We like to use a famous saying here at North Hills, if you fail to plan, then you are planning to fail. Think about that for a moment, twist your brain around that one. Do you think that this is true? To be honest, our worst nightmare is that you walk across that stage at Martorelli, in this case, it would be on May 28th, 2021, and that you don't have a plan, that you don't know what comes next. We would be terrified for that to happen, and the purpose of evening events like this is so that we can help you have a plan and be ready to achieve whatever you wanna achieve after North Hills. Again, a reminder that Mrs. Davis is available in the chat option if you would like to pose any questions. Now, it's important to get a good mindset when you are planning for your goals. And the first thing we'd like you to realize is that this is a process. When you are going through something extended like this, um, realize that there are gonna be a lot of little decisions you need to make that add up. Um, you might have to make some big decisions. You know, once you finally have your menu of options, you know, you're gonna have to choose one. But often in life, there is red tape and bureaucracy and paperwork that goes into completing a lot of little tasks that add up into a larger overall goal. So just be ready for that, gear up for that larger process. And of course, please pay attention to any deadlines. We do want you to choose your own path. You may hear about something that a sibling did or a cousin did or a friend or what they're, they're up to but we want you to focus on you. You are gonna be the driving force in your life. And while there are uh, unforeseen circumstances that happen in everyone's life, we're hoping that you take the actions that make your goals a reality. So start to think about you and what your own personal goals are. And while we are in, I'm gonna say it, unprecedented times right now, don't let yourself 
uh, be affected by things that are happening right now in terms of your long-term goals. Of course, we want to consider them. Uh, there is a global uh, epidemic going on right now, but plan for the future, please, okay? And consider what you, are important to you, your own personal interests. 10 years from now, if you're in a job you hate, uh, we want you to kind of reflect back and, and think, gosh, you know, what choices did I make to get there? Or on the flip side, if you're, if you're doing something that you love, we want you to be proud and say, you know what, I took the steps to get there. Hopefully it's the latter case. But again, waiting until June to plan for this is probably not going to get to the result that you want. Now, I keep mentioning Mrs. Davis, who is in the chat, uh, able to answer your questions. And she and I make up the 11 and 12 school counseling team. North Hills High School divides a lot of the uh, school activities based on the, your last name and the alphabet. And you can see that I have the students with the last names A through L, and that Mrs. Davis has the students with M through Z. We would be remiss if we did not mention a vital part of our school counseling team. That is Mrs. Daria White. Um, she is our school counseling secretary and a vital member of our team. Um, she can help you with a great deal of the activities that uh, you might need help with. We would really encourage you to stay connected. Of course, I'm, as they say, preaching to the choir, meaning that you're already here. You are already getting connected, getting information. We appreciate that. Uh, but please uh, pay attention to the school counseling Google Classroom posts and the emails that we send you and the various notices that we give you. We really want you to, to know what's going on, okay? Um, if you get too many from us, we apologize, but, but uh, in this case, I th we think more is better than less. Um, start to think about the folks, I, I know I did just tell you to you know, focus on you, but there are people in your lives, whether it's your parent or guardians or, or uh, folks you know from your part-time job or your place of worship or, or whatever, uh, folks in your network um, may have uh, some insight in you. They saw your habits, they saw your interests, they saw you get excited about something. And, and while eventually it does, it, it comes down to you, maybe you ask them, you know, for, hey, you know, what would you consider be a good match for me? But please ask us questions. It gets so frustrating when people say, I don't mean to bug you. Folks, this is our job. Well, we're here for you, okay? You know, we, we, we want to help you. So please, you're never bugging us. Please send us what you got. We're happy to help. Now, um, I, I, I've been a little theoretical, kind of, um, uh, touchy-feely with some of that stuff right there. Let's talk about some concrete things that you could actually do right now if you need to make some plans for your future. There's a concept uh, called reverse engineering where you have a, a final project product and you take it apart and see how it was made. I'd like to apply that to the idea of finding your, your, your best destiny, your, your, your best career out there. And so I'd like you to think um, maybe about identifying a future career you have and then taking steps to work your way backwards in time from that, wherever you are in that, uh, what needed to happen for you to get there. And that can bring us all the way back to our present now. And then you can reconstruct that and, and reach that goal. One way to identify that future career could be on pacareerzone.org. This is run by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and it has some great inventories. And when you take an inventory, you take stock of something. And in this case, you take stock of yourself, your values, your interests, um, your skills. And this website is, is really quality. Um, please make a login, by the way, so your, your um, results are saved. But it will say, hey, based on what you told us, here are some careers you might want to explore. And these are the majors or the certificate or the education you might need to get to pursue that career. And then you could even watch some videos about it. This is a great way to kind of uh, identify a career and maybe, like I said, a major or certificate or degree that you need to get uh, to pursue that particular career. As part of that uh, kind of exploration as well, maybe you want to consider some of the North Hills uh, classes you might have. And again, speak it with your network. So let's say you do some work on PA Career Zone. Great, okay, juniors, you probably remember that we did some work on this during the classroom lessons that we had last year. But then it might be time to start to figure out, well, what institutions have that major that are gonna get me into that career? So again, reverse engineering your future, uh, getting us back and closer and closer today by finding the institution that has that degree or certificate or whatever that gets you that great job that you want. 
One good website to use is the big futures part of collegeboard.org. You may know collegeboard.org as the website that organizes the SATs. Um, and uh, they also have this really great search uh, engine where um, if you go under their college search portion, they'll take you to this big future website and you will be able to use different criteria that are important to you to identify an institution. Do you want it to be in an urban environment, suburban environment, a rural environment? Do you want it to have a particular theme or, or um, uh, value set? Do you want it to have, of course, certain majors, uh, I think, you, or certificates? Make sure it has the degree that you are looking for, of course, but um, you're able to use that to identify some institutions. So if you ever wonder, hey, how do people make a list? This is a great way uh, that students do it. We'd be happy to go over this and do this with you if you like. As you do so, maybe you want to stay organized. Of course, you know, uh, we, you could have a binder and physical folders and things like that. Some students have three piles, you know, a, a, a trash pile, a maybe pile, and a, oh, I definitely want to look at this pile, whatever. You know, students come up with rating systems for the different uh, things that they get, you know, so many smiley faces for something they want or stars or things like that. But it's a good idea to really get organized, and that includes uh, maybe some electronic organizations as well. Um, you may want to open emails from institutions. A lot of times colleges can tell, um, and I slipped and said colleges there, I should have said post-secondary institutions, um, they can tell whether or not you've opened an email. So it's a good idea to look at that and see if you are able to um, open the emails just because they can check that. So um, at this point, I also want to recommend having a family meeting, talking with your parent or guardians. In some way, they can be involved with this process and you wanna find out how and approach that in a way that could maximize possibly the support you could receive from those folks. Now, I like to use this graphic of a tree. Mrs. Davis and I like to use this graphic of a, a tree. And again, if you wanna uh, chat with her, uh, she's available and she can prompt me to answer some questions you might have. You know, when we think of a, a tree, uh, there are roots. And, and when we refer to roots, that's our family, our, 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 our unit that, that raised us. And then uh, considering the trunk of this tree, that's North Hills. You are all coming through this common experience here and getting, um, you know, the, the uh, general uh, education based on the graduation requirements. But after that, you're going to branch out. Now, don't get scared when we identify just five big branches after high school here, because the thing to remember about a tree is they intertwine, they grow, they bend and twist, and um, they're a, a living thing that, that uh, can adapt and evolve. But as we think about it, the big branches that come off after North Hills, you're going to make one of these five decisions, really. You may go right into the workforce, and if that is what you want to do, we want to support you. That's awesome. Maybe you went to the A.W. Beatty Career Center and you have the certificates to go right into a workforce. If we can support you in some way to do that, help you find a job uh, during your senior year, help you do a co-op, uh, we'd love to help you do that. Awesome. Some folks uh, may want to pursue the armed services. Um, they like the idea of serving our country. They like the idea of travel, the lifestyle. Um, they like the idea of having access to the GI Bill, which will greatly help them pay for post-secondary institution at a later date. Great. If that's what you want to do, that's your best destiny, let us help you. Um, some folks might want to pursue vocational, technical, or career training. And um, every year, you, you may have seen in the past, we have our trades fair. And uh, we bring in individuals to help you learn about these different vocations, these different trades. And uh, the economic data uh, nationally says we are going to need a lot of uh, folks in the manufacturing and trades in the future. Could be some great career opportunities. Let us help you with that. Awesome. Now, you may say, you know what, um, the community college will get me the education that I need because it has the certificate you want or the associate's degree that you want. Um, or you could use that as a springboard to go off to a, a four-year institution. That's awesome. If that's what you want to do, great. We have one right up the street. The North Campus, the CCAC is right up the street. And we are excited that uh, there's a shuttle bus that goes from the Westview Plaza right across from the Dunkin' Donuts. And um, we... Uh, North Hills, honestly, was very instrumental for that happening, and we're pretty proud of that. Um, it's a, a vital part of, of the transportation up that uh, corridor to the community college. Some of you may say, you know what, I'm going to need a formal degree 
uh, from college or university that is going to represent my body of work and be able to get me the career I want. Great. We would love to help you with that. Okay. A lot of different opportunities in that. But throughout this presentation, uh, we are going to try and address all these different things. Okay. So please continue to watch uh, because uh, each of these paths has value, has honor, and has importance. Now, I've been using a little bit of vocabulary there, so it's worth pausing for a moment to talk about some degree terms. The technical certificate uh, represents a certain body of work. Uh, sometimes it could be one year, some can be two, it, it, it depends, but in general, it shows that you uh, know certain things and are certified to do that, and that gives people confidence in your ability to complete a task or a job. There are associate's degrees out there. Typically, these are 60 credits of, of college, uh, but of a, a structured type, and it represents your knowledge in certain areas. For instance, the community college offers these. A bachelor's degree is what we typically refer to when we talk about going to college, quote unquote. A bachelor's degree, uh, theoretically, is to, supposed to take four years, and we really encourage you to, to go on a four-year plan. Uh, you might hear statistics about this or that happening, and please realize those statistics count people who might have studied abroad, or, and, and extended their uh, four years a bit, and engineering co-ops and things like that. But gosh, with the high cost of uh, uh, post-secondary education, please plan on, on maximizing your time and, and not extending it longer than it has to be. There are some degrees that have to have master's degrees. For instance, Mrs. Davis and I, at the you know, start of our employment, have to have master's degrees. So um, that represents advanced study in a particular area. And then there's things like doctoral degrees, people like dentists, physicians, but lawyers uh, and other people who have an extended uh, degree of uh, professional um, education, um, that would be a professional degree and that sometimes takes longer. So those are some of the terms we're gonna use. Now, we are gonna talk about some interesting terms that we use here. And uh, to be honest, I'm gonna skip a bit down and talk first about open admissions. Open admissions is when an institution has some pretty basic requirements. For instance, the Community College of Allegheny County. You need to have graduated from high school and live in Allegheny County. And, and that is some of the, the, the more minimal requirements, okay, uh, to get in. Some institutions have what are called, what is called regular admissions, where they say, this is the date. Please get us all your materials by this date. And, and for the sake of uh, this discussion here, I'm going to use January 1st. They want you to get their things with regular admission by January 1. And to be honest, it doesn't matter when you send it in prior to that. It can be any date leading all the way up to January 1. It goes into a pile. And after that, they're going to review you. That is very different than what is called rolling admissions, where in rolling admissions, they don't wait for a certain date to re review you. As you come in, they are going to review you and get back to you. And you can, uh, I think, realize where it's probably important if you feel like it's iffy, if you're not going to get admitted, you do want to apply early in that because admission standards do increase and change as the, uh, the institution gets an idea of what their class is going to be like. And um, they could very well um, increase the rigor of the admissions requirements as the year goes on. Now, that was tricky enough. Here's where we talk about early decision. Now, an early decision, a institution usually has a regular admissions deadline already. So they have both, you know, where you, we use January 1st. But with an early, early decision, you are picking one school that is your top choice. And you are saying to them, if you admit me, I am coming. And this is a contractual agreement. You enter into a college. And it's not something to be taken lightly. In fact, a lot of places ask us to certify that we had a conversation with you about it. And what you need to do is, um, if admitted, you will go there. Um, the benefit of this is that the admissions rate from among the early decision folks um, is usually higher than the, with their regular admission because they know you're going to come. And they give you a little, uh, defer to you a bit saying, okay, you know what? This is a slam dunk for us. If, if we admit them, we know they're going to come. Um, we're, it's that's great. Um, it is possible if you're not admitted early decision to also be considered for a school for regular admissions, but you really need to realize that might be a little bit of an uphill battle there. Finally, here's an even crazier term, early action. Early action can mean different things. Early action can be a combination of something like early decision, but it's not binding, where they have a regular admissions deadline, and, but they say, you know what, if you get us to this date, we're going to get back to you. They could have a rolling admissions where they say, okay, we're admitting people, but if you ha get us to, by this date, we're going to let you know early. 
It is a term that is used in a lot of different ways by a lot of different institutions. So please keep, uh, do some research and, and just be aware what each institution means by early action. Um, we do have the, our graphic of our jack-o'-lanterns there and we do uh, uh, ask you to maybe think about using the next couple months to uh, apply to these institutions, uh, maybe by Halloween, that's a soft deadline, uh, but um, because that way um, you, you know you acted early, they have your information, and if you need to do anything else, you can get that done. Okay, let's pause for a second. I was doing a little vocabulary lesson there. And again, talk about what you need to do right now, seriously. Um, first thing to do, maybe determine uh, what level of education you wish to pursue to get the career that you want, okay? Use your, all your resources to determine if this is the best. And then start to figure out what steps you need to reach that goal, what you need to do to apply. We'll get to that in a moment, okay? And please, again, keep track of deadlines. And then you can start to begin to forward your information and documents requested to the institution, okay? We're gonna tell you in a bit how you would do that. Now, <clears throat> as you're, you're gathering information, you're trying to figure out what you wanna do, perhaps you wanna participate in some of the visits to North Hills by the college and military representatives. Now, I'm not sure if you heard, but there is this thing going on right now uh, that is preventing us from hosting visits, and in fact, you at North Hills. So the college visits this year, the military visits are gonna be virtual. And we will be publishing this list. Um, they visit throughout September and October and November. We're gonna be publishing it in the Google Classroom, via email, on the website. And it's worthwhile attending these for a number of reasons. Um, you may have already know all about the institution, okay? You may be committed to applying, but maybe you want to go because the school will know whether or not, and they may make, make a note of it, okay? And when they open up that admissions to, uh, folder to review you, it might be nice for you to say, oh, look, look how interested this student is in, in our school, okay? While I have this other student right here, we don't know them at all, okay? They didn't, uh, they didn't come to our visit. They didn't visit us at a college fair or, or talk to us on campus or email us, okay? That is called... Um, demonstrated interest, you're demonstrating interest, and some colleges use that as a factor in admissions. Now, um, these virtual visits uh, are hosted by the institutions themselves, okay? Uh, we hope that their links always work and stuff like that, but we do need to direct you to them if you would have questions about the visits themselves. Now, in the past, we would have our students every October attend the North Pittsburgh College Fair. It's not possible this year. So we have uh, want to uh, have you have access to some virtual college fairs. And uh, these are going to be happening in a number of dates over this fall. And the virtualcollegefairs.org, www.virtualcollegefairs.org, will be the site that you can visit to register and then uh, walk around this virtual marketplace of schools and get in line to talk to the different institutions that would be there. Again, that's virtualcollegefairs.org. There is also an opportunity coming up that we're, we're trying to get some more information about. Um, the previous uh, event was hosted by NACAC, the National Association of College Admissions Counselors. Uh, there's a great organization called PACAC, the Pennsylvania Association of College Admissions Counselors. I happen to be a member of both. Uh, that's why I, I try and uh, for you to keep up on this stuff. And um, they're going to be having a variety of different information sessions throughout the fall. Um, as we get information on that, we're going to send it out to you via Google Classroom, via email, via the website. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, okay, all right, I'm going to uh, make my list. I'm going to uh, apply to these institutions. Well, how many? Well, that's a tricky question to answer because there is no magic number. Instead, you may want to think about um, some different categories of schools to apply to based on your own background. You may want to say, you know what, there's some schools out there I'd love to go to, but gosh, it's really hard to get in there. I don't, maybe I don't quite have their um, requirements, but I'm going to reach, I'm going to, I'm going to try and go in there in case it works out. You might want to say, you know what, there's some schools where looking at the past data, what I have in my background, it's reasonable be, that you might be accepted to those institutions. Great. Uh, apply to some of those and maybe you even have a chance of scholarship. And then it might be responsible to apply to some schools where you definitely know you meet their, uh, not only meet their admission standards, but possibly exceed them. There's the idea uh, of sometimes applying to these schools so that um, you slam dunk some of these uh, admissions requirements and qualify for scholarships. Um, that's not a bad idea. In fact, um, it, it's probably worthwhile uh, applying to a variety of schools from these categories to create a good menu for yourself. 
Now, there are some basic things that you're going to have to send to an institution. And uh, this does, uh, most of these uh, apply to whatever you might want to be doing, whether it's the military or, or community college or college or, or, or a trade school, they're going to need an application, something you put your demographic, demographic information into. And most of them do have application fees. Uh, I, I should have mentioned under the college fair, um, I'm sorry, the college fair and the virtual visits, that sometimes these application fees can be waived if you attend those. I highly encourage you during the uh, virtual college fairs, or the virtual visits North Hills to ask about this, okay? You're out there putting yourself out there. Maybe they can help you because these application fees could be 50, 60, 70, even $80. At some point, you're gonna need to have your official high school transcript sent. And this is the record of the classes you took at North Hills, the grades you uh, received in them, and even your Keystone scores, that's, that's required by law. Um, and then uh, we're going to talk in a bit about standardized test scores. Most, most institutions require a test of some sort. The trade unions have tests of their own. The military has the ASVAB. And then there's the SATs and ACTs. And in some cases, this is, quote unquote, all you have to send. However, you may want to send some additional materials as well, some supplemental materials. Years and years ago, I was an admissions counselor. I sat at a, a very good institution on the admissions committee and I decided who got in and who didn't. And I can tell you, it was really easy to turn down a collection of numbers. You know, when, when institutions see uh, uh, your SATs and your GPA and stuff like that, if that's all they have, uh, then, then uh, heck, uh, even a computer can, can decide whether or not they meet certain standards. But gosh, was it tough to turn down a person? somebody who you read over their personal statement or essay, read about their dreams, read about their um, goals. And, and I believe it is still that way, um, that the more information you can give them, making yourself uh, you know, an actual person uh, could possibly make a difference in decision and admissions decision. Letters of recommendation can help as well. I'll talk about those in a moment, okay, but they can give some context to it. And a resume and a list of your activities show that, you know what, um, you did uh, these, got these grades while also doing all these other activities as well. As adults, our lives are multifaceted and we have a lot of things going on. And even in college, you have a lot going on. And the idea is that if you can manage all these other things while also getting these good grades, and that could be a, a part-time job or volunteer work or whatever, um, that shows that you are um, doing a, a great job of multitasking. If you have any awards or certificates or things like that, I would highly encourage you to um, send those as well. And sometimes there's opportunities, particularly for majors related to art or maybe uh, architecture or something like that, where having a video or website or some sort of portfolio can definitely help uh, show them some of the great things you've been up to. Now, nearly every application goes through the internet. I haven't seen a paper application in, in a couple years now, okay? And um, some schools uh, have an individual site that you go to to complete it. And if you apply to a number of institutions, you may find yourself filling out the same information again and again and again, but that may be the way you have to do it. However, there are some schools that got together and said, hey, we're all asking for the same common information. Why don't we have one application that somebody submits all their information to, but then selects uh, who from a list of schools want to get that information. That was the origin of the Common App and even the Coalition. And what you do on these websites is you create accounts, you put all your information in once, and then again, you select the institution that you want it to go to. Um, you would ask us as North Hills to upload your information once to that. And then at a later date, if you want an added school, great, it's already there. You have to do it uh, just that one time. Now, it is important uh, to realize that some schools ask you to self-report your transcript. This is uh, sometimes called an SRAR, self-reported academic record. And what you do is you will take a, a, a copy of your transcript. We can give you an unofficial copy of that and you will go grade by grade, class by class, and input your own grades. Now, you wanna be accurate because if you end up going to that institution, they will double check over the summer. So you wanna make sure you're very accurate about that. There's a worst case scenario there where, where you misrepresent yourself, okay? But um, you largely do all of these things through um, electronic methods, and that includes the NCAA as well. If you're interested in being a division one or two athlete, um, you would do through at the eligibilitycenter.org. Our athletic director, Mr. Weber, uh, is great about assisting students with that. And to be honest, 
our resident expert, Mrs. Davis, who again is fielding chat questions at the same time while I'm talking here, is our resident expert on that. And she has some great knowledge about how to be a college athlete. Now, in the very near future, and, and we think we're actually gonna be able to do this tomorrow, we are going to be deb debuting a new transcript request form. In the past, we had a paper form, and it was very important for us to have your signature that uh, you are giving us the permission to send your records out to different institutions. However, like most things in society, we do need to make adjustments. And we are going to be sending out a Google form uh, that is going to require you to use your North Hills Gmail. We want to have that level of security so that we know this request is coming from you. Um, and uh, I know that's sometimes frustrating to folks who are logged into every email, but again, your confidentiality is very important to us. And with this form, um, you're going to be able to request an unofficial or official transcript, request a letter of recommendation, and also give us some context. Give Mrs. Davis and I some context when we complete uh, the forms for that. We're going to send that out very soon in a variety of methods. Now, I mentioned letters of recommendation. The idea is that somebody out there thinks you're awesome. Maybe it's a boss or a clergy member or your school counselor or a teacher, somebody in your network that has had interactions with you and can speak to your positive characteristics, okay? Um, we're gonna debut the new form. Uh, in the past, you may have uh, completed some of our letter of information uh, recommendation forms, okay? Uh, we, we, we're, we're gonna start phasing away from those real soon, but, um, if you ask someone for a letter of recommendation and they are going to be submitting it electronically, please approach them prior to them getting that electronic uh, request for it. You know, if somebody, you don't want to surprise somebody. You don't want somebody to be, um, um, not know that you, you need this and try and wonder what this is. It doesn't speak to your, to your uh, organization and to your respect. So give somebody a heads up before that and say, hey, this is a method that I'd like you to, to submit it. I really would appreciate you doing this. Now, oh boy, here we go. SATs and ACTs. Mrs. Davis and I need you to know that our hearts go out to all of you who had a date canceled, that had a site canceled. Uh, it has been a nightmare scenario, uh, but literally we are, we are dealing with matters of, of, of life and death here. Um, and so um, there were uh, some tough decisions that were made um, that, that um, may have limited your ability to take these SATs or ACTs. These are the, the college entrance exams that a lot of schools ask to look at. Um, you still have an opportunity to take it. Um, please explore those. Um, I'll show you the websites in just a moment. Uh, we encourage you to do so. But uh, we want to address the idea of more and more schools being test optional. It used to be exceedingly rare, no matter what the media said. There were like five or six schools that did it. Uh, it was not a lot, okay? But uh, with the uh, difficulty you had in registering taking the test, it is nice to see that post-secondary institutions, colleges, and universities have responded and said, listen, it's been tough for everybody. We are going to uh, possibly be test optional. The thing to note, though, is that um, you have to, when you submit your application, indicate whether or not you want to have your application be considered with your SATs or ACTs or without it. Now, a little research here is going to help you answer that question. If your scores kind of meet what they had last year or exceed it, then it could be really to be your benefit to include your scores. If not, then it could be your benefit not to include those scores. So um, play the game there. Um, think about uh, what their research, what they did last year and where you are and make the best decision that could possibly help you. So please uh, consider that, okay? Now, it is still possible to take these tests, okay? Uh, we highly encourage you to look at the sites and the dates that are listed on these two websites right here. Um, and, and uh, this uh, is, it could still be important to some institutions. Again, do your research. If uh, you would need some financial assistance, we'd be very happy to help you with that. Uh, largely based on the free and reduced lunch program, but fee waivers are available for both of these tests, which at last count were, were, were north of $60 a piece. Now, Please note that you are responsible for getting your SAT scores where you want them to go. You pay for them, okay? They are not part of your North Hills record. They're honestly your private property, okay? So we, we, we simply can't send them out, okay? When you register, you have the opportunity to, to designate a couple schools you would like them to get for free. So think about that carefully. Um, at, at a later date, you can still go on to collegeboard.com or, or to the actstudent.org um, and 
pay for your schools to be uh, scores to be sent to schools at a later date. Uh, but like I said, that, that you'll pay for that. There is a fee if you do that at a later date. That is how the 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 SAT and ACT are able to to finance their operations. Now there is other admissions testing, okay? And um, at the same time, you're you're pursuing some of those other options. You could be pursuing these great options as well. The ASVAB is the Armed Services Vocational Aptitude Battery, and it is used for placement in the military. It's kind of like the SATs for the military. The better the do you do, the better options you may have uh, in the different branches of the military. And some people take it actually as a career exploration tool as well. If you're interested in taking the ASVAB, let us know so we can help you. And there are a lot of uh, te trade testing that happens, okay? You wouldn't be surprised midway through the se senior year, some of our juniors take this test and come back to us and say, gosh, uh, I, I, I'm glad I paid attention in geometry or in, in English because I, I needed to know how to read a technical manual. I needed to know how to do some algebra for this. So all the skills you're learning in high school can be very important to this. And there's some great information on the buildersguild.org website. Now, we do want to address, we've been talking about doing things electronically. We need to address social media and give you a hint that um, you can either help or possibly hurt yourself um, with how you are representing yourself online. It is not uncommon for someone to ask to follow you on Instagram or another site or research who you are online. Please make sure that you are posting positive content and that you're putting your best foot forward. This includes your professional uh, presence as well in regards to email. Don't let a joke email that you had fun with your friends that uh, kind of you got used to uh, cost you admissions, okay? Uh, you wouldn't be, you'd be surprised at some of the emails that, that we get from, from even parents, you know, uh, uh, that, are, that are just honestly, some really crude. Don't, don't do that, okay? You gotta, you gotta, um, coach yourself up and, and find a professional email address. And, and you will have to migrate away from your North Hills, North, North Hills email, even though we're using it so vitally this year, okay? Just be prepared to, uh, that that will be shut down after your time at North Hills. We give you some time in June, but uh, eventually that does uh, migrate away. Now, I wanna to talk to you about uh, financing your education. Uh, no matter what you do, the, there's probably going to be a cost associated with us with it, and anything you can do to minimize that cost would be to your benefit. Okay, um, North Hills, you know, years ago used to be the site, like a library. We were the sites where people would send scholarship information to send out to people. But honestly, we get a tiny, tiny fraction of what we get now because it is all available to you online. Honestly, most scholarships uh, opportunities skip us. They know they can reach you directly online via some of these big websites that we have. Listed Listed here, FastWeb, CollegeBoard.com, uh, the SallyMay.com. So some of those websites right there. Um, so it is worthwhile talking with your parents, employers, community, civic organizations. Now we will post absolutely. We will post certain rec uh, certain scholarships that come to us, uh, and there are some North Hill specific scholarships. But uh, largely, this process has 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 skipped us. Um, but we we will help where we can. Um, you may wish to um, concentrate more on your admissions right now. Uh, we haven't really gotten, I can't think of any scholarships we've gotten notice about so far this year, uh, because it does tend to be a more of a winter and spring activity uh, as things become a little more real. Now, speaking of getting real, um, we're, things are going to get real on October 1st. October 1st is the first date that seniors could apply for financial aid. You do through through a uh, form called the FAFSA. It's a governmental form. And uh, we'd like you to learn before October 1st, before you're able to do that, we'd like to give you an opportunity to learn all about that from an expert. I'm gonna be doing a little hosting duties, but really we're gonna rely on our expert from FIA, the Pennsylvania Higher Education Assistance Agency to present this on uh, September 24th in a very similar format to this. The link's going to be on the North Hills website, so we'd encourage you to uh, participate in that. Uh, and it is worthwhile noting it, to receive financial aid, males do need to register with the Selective Service. It is still a federal requirement. Well, uh, I, I've been watching Mrs. Davis, uh, shaking some cues for her. We haven't really gotten any anything in the chat. Uh, uh, we're going to take that as a sign that we did a wonderful job uh, answering all your questions ahead of time. Uh, we, we, Mrs. Davis and I have been doing this for, for a lot of years. Um, please, please reach out to us. Uh, we want to help you. Um, it, it feels like you guys are so far away and that, that kills us, especially, you know, uh, educators, because we, we went into this work directly with you. And um, it, it's very strange. Uh, we want to help you make a plan. Uh, 
we want you to walk across that stage of Martorelli and, and know exactly what you're going to want to do. We want to high five you. Actually, sorry, we won't high five you anymore because of social distancing, but you know what I mean. We want to celebrate with you on that day because you have a great future ahead of you. So um, in a moment too, I am going to stop the uh, recording right here. We are going to put this on the uh, North Hills website in uh, just a moment, uh, I'm sorry, uh, by tomorrow, but uh, we wish you, wish you well, and please reach out to us. We very much want to uh, help you reach your goals to achieve your best destiny after your time at North Hills High School.